Hello to my earth signs Capricorn, Taurus and Virgo. Welcome to the Taurus New Moon. You'll find the timestamps for your rising signs listed below. Hello Capricorn Rising, welcome to your reading for the Taurus New Moon happening very soon on Wednesday the 8th of May at 1.24pm if you're in the Southern Hemisphere with me. So as always, I've got there just in time. I do apologise for my tardiness. However, I've got a lot of astrology in the coming weeks to talk about and also I wanted to get off my own back and tell you that I've actually been working with Venus in Taurus to the letter for the past two weeks since the Scorpio full moon. I've been sat on the couch with two of my Chihuahua friends, eating pasta, making sauce, languishing, lounging in my tracksuit, uh, watching Nigella Lawson. And I can't think of a better description of what one should do when Venus is in Taurus. Get off your own back, Capricorn rising. Allow yourself a bit of pleasure. Allow yourself a bit of um, enjoyment at this time. Now, I know that that kind of advice might come with a bit of a metallic sort of feeling um, because of the continual pressure that surrounds us right now. We know that as we trolley along in this life, the uh, tensions are growing and there is so much heartache and stress at, at this moment. You're not doing yourself any favours by being engaged 100% of the time with your hackles up, with your uh, alert uh, senses up. You need some time to recuperate. You need some time to um, enjoy being a human. Looking at your birth chart, if you're a Capricorn rising, Taurus is the fifth house. So this is where we express ourselves creatively and otherwise. It's where we uh, tell everyone how we see the world from our perspective. It's where we enact pleasure. So everything that I've just said about the enjoyment of life, about the taste of food, the smell of cooking, the feel and touch of nature is urging you, beckoning you to reacquaint yourself with it right now. You know that phrase, um, touch grass? Um, it can often be said as a bit of an admonishment. Um, it can also be said as an invitation. Um, take your shoes off, go outside, feel the earth beneath your feet, feel the reason for having this biological space suit um, and try and find some pleasure amidst all of this. Venus in Taurus wants us to feel it, wants us to enjoy it, wants us to revel in it. The fifth house wants us to do all of that stuff too. What I can see here in the astrology is pleasure as an act of rebellion or an act of resistance. And I really like that sentiment. The sun and the moon are at 19, 18 degrees of Taurus at this lunation, and it's forming a moment to plant a seed. I've got the ace of pentacles here for us just to look at as we talk about this. This is like the ideal card for our seed planting. You know, you can see that there's that garden down the bottom there. There's a potential, there's a, gar there's a pathway into something that looks abundant, that looks fertile. And the, the ace is a pretty direct offer from your spirituality. So on the topic of your creative self-expression, on the topic of your access to pleasure and the body and to enjoyment in this life, we can use this moon and also this, the rest of this month as the time to start planting some of those seeds for future growth. It's a long time coming, Capricorn Rising. You've been working so diligently and so responsibly that this astrology is coming at a pretty pertinent, pretty um, perfect time for us to refocus just a little bit. We can't have it all one way or the other you know we know too much um, sensory pleasures too much decadence too much um, uh, 
uh, of it, and too much of anything. Well, what did Mae West say? Too much of a good thing can be wonderful. Well, that's one th way to think about it too. Um, you're going to feel a reactivation if you do so, Capricorn rising. You're going to feel that life is for many purposes, not just the commitment to task and commitment to work. Taurus is really committed as well. All of the earth signs are. Venus in Taurus is really about reaping what you've sown, about sort of enjoying the, the, the natural wonders of this world. So all of those topics can sort of roll around your head. Remember that a new moon is about sort of planting these ideas. So even just by me speaking about this, maybe you're thinking to yourself, oh God, I can't remember the last time that I actually cooked myself a decent dinner, or I can't remember the last time that I went to the market. I had this conversation with a friend really recently. They were like, I live around the corner from one of the most beautiful markets in this city, and I never go because I'm always too exhausted after whatever I just... I." order in or I go to the expensive supermarket downstairs and there's all of this activity, there's all of this abundance, this life happening just around the corner and I don't participate because of my, um, my energy levels. That's one way to activate this kind of astrology is to be like, you know what, I do live in a community that is abundant and there is so much um, enjoyment waiting for me. The walk to the market and back could be beautiful. Um, the anonymity of walking through a marketplace and looking at all of the fresh produce and hearing the hawkers yell their best price is really invigorating. It's really engaging my interest at, at, at this time. So that could be just one simple way to work with Venus in Taurus. Um, on counter to that sort of sweetness and that sort of deliciousness, there's a bit of heat, there's a bit of spice too. So right next door, Mars is doing its thing in Aries. So we're thinking back to your fourth house, which is your home base, your root structures, your privacy, your security. Now, we know that the eclipses brought with it the stories that we have told ourselves or the recollection of our, of our upbringing, our history. We know that there's been many pain points, many bruises that we've had to tend to. A lot of unconscious wounding has brought itself to the very surface, telling us that they won't be ignored any longer. And that's really great, valuable work. We know that Mercury was also retrograde for the past several weeks, all through eclipse season, during during a time where we really could have needed some clarity. Um, we know that they're stationed direct now. We know that they're moving on through. Mars is to Aries what Venus is to Taurus. So both of these personal planets are in signs that they do really well in. If we're going to lean on Venus and re-engage our pleasure centres in our fifth house, if we're going to get back into the body, back into the senses, we're also going to get back into our confidence and our bravery. We're going to assert ourselves and we're going to um, be direct with our boundaries around our safe space, around our privacy. We're going to re-establish that as something to be proud of. I've got just a feeling here about sort of like... Um, be proud of where you came from too. I'm not sure if that's valid for you. But um, yeah, it's just it just looks like that to me. I think Mars in Aries in the fourth house, so Capricorn Risings. It's be proud of where you came from is just a sentiment that, that might be worth something for you moving forward. Think about the culture where you came from. Think about, think about life in its simplest essence. Think about life separate to this screen that I'm talking to you through right now. Think about what's out there. Think about the rhythms of a community. Think about what you love and enjoy to do nearby to where you live. Think about what you love and enjoy to do inside in peace and quiet. 
think about how you've structured your life, how you've structured your home, that possibly might be a little bit different to the home that you were raised in. Um, it might be a following on of a grand tradition too, and that might be something that you can re-establish some pride in. Um, this astrology really wants you to be self-expressed and be in your body when receiving pleasure, when giving pleasure, when engaging in pleasure. It's one of Nigella Lawson's favourite words is pleasure. You know, I love to say it as much as she does. Um, sometimes I can't feel it. Um, but what I'm learning as well is that it takes a little while to reacquaint yourself if it's been a long time between proverbial drinks. So, yeah. Let's get you some tarot, Capricorn Rising. Let's see what else is going on in the sky. I'm just going to quickly scan the transits too. Mm, all you need to know is that Venus will be in Taurus until the end of the month and Mars will be in Aries until the beginning of June. And so everything that we've contended with in those two areas of life, when we think about the revolution that you're yearning and longing for in your creative self-expression, the way that you put yourself out there, um, Venus is qualifying all of those impulses this month. When we think about all of those bruised, soft pain points in regards to your ancestry, your um, root system, where you came from, when we think about your sense of belonging and your sense of privacy and your right to that, Mars is reassessing all of those topics that we've been contending with and is bringing something that feels like strength, that feels like bravery. So... This is a this is a, a nice month. Um, we're moving towards something um, of a change of um, feeling. So Jupiter is going to be leaving Taurus at the end of this month too. So we're going to into a different chapter of the story. Um, but just, if at all possible, take it as slow as you can, just for the next couple of weeks, just for the rest of May, just languish lounge, like feel yourself, um, get a facial um, in whatever definition that rings true for you. Let's have a look at your tarot. <clears throat> I'm blushing. Okay. So in the center, we have someone very familiar to you. We know that this is the card, the devil, that speaks to the overarching sense of the sign Capricorn. It gives us a real pictorial um, of one of the ways to read the sign. We know that Capricorn is on that mountain, climbing, 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 achieving, achieving. Um, oftentimes, it can feel pretty solitary and you can feel pretty alone. This is great for ambition. This is great for, for, for growth this is not so good if it's a uh, mask or if it's if it's if your work ethic is used so and I've said this with you a thousand times but if your work ethic is in replacement of a personality um, then that's an issue Capricorn rising and you're not at fault to be thinking that way or to be sort of working um, from that impulse. I'm a Capricorn sun so I can completely identify with you um, that somewhere along the line we learned that by holding our work up under our chin we then were validated. That's how we received love, that's how we received um, praise. I read something really beautiful and I'm paraphrasing it and I can't even tell you the source. Uh, it was it was from an artist, and they said, everyone seemed to like my work more than they liked me, so I learned to survive through my work. Does that make sense to you? That's something that just it just felt really Capricorn to me as I read it. Um, we need folks like you that have the ambition and you are sort of great at leading by example, um, but if you're surviving through your work because you think that's the only thing 
that's worth talking about your personality, um, then that needs to be rectified. Um, what I really like is that very recently you've come back into company with, with someone or something. It this feels like something a little bit nostal nostalgic, but it also feels like a bit of a meeting of minds too. There's a lot of love here in this trifecta. I actually, I watched The Craft last week um, speaking about magical trifectas. The power of three is really strong in this, this card here. The power of three as a loving unit is really strong. Um, and so I wonder if some of this um, opportunity for you to be vulnerable, perhaps with folks that you've not seen for a little while, but that feel kind of like family as well. It's sort of like, well, it's been ages, but look, we're just like we were when we were kids. Like that's the kind of energy that I get here. In that reunion, now you're sort of sitting with the devil again. So it's sort of like, right, okay, so I'm investing all of my energy in the work, into the work. I seem to be overworking again. Or am I turning this, which is for pleasure's sake, am I turning this into another avenue for more work? That's just something here as well. I'll leave you for you, I'll leave you to assess that and to answer that yourself, Capricorn rising. Um, what I can see here is that there's something of a kind of reacquaintance though with something of your confidence your sexuality your power your enjoyment of life so whatever's gone on here with this reunion this group this little collective of folks it doesn't have to be literally three people but the idea of like coming back to a sense of um being in the company of folks that know you like the back of their hand something of your confidence is being reinstigated, reinstated because of this and including this, you're getting back in touch with the magical properties of your life. It's just a matter of what you need to discuss with the devil. And I don't say that the devil is a Capricorn card. That means because you're evil at all. You can see in this version of the devil, there's two folks here. And they've got chains around their neck. They look like they're in servitude, but they're incredibly loose and they can be lifted off at any moment in time. And the devil is the one to ask the question to these folks. The devil is like, are you ready? You can take them off. What have you been doing to yourself? You've been working really hard, have you? How's, how's your hair? It's a bit dull, is it? How's your skin? How's your health? Um... Just questions is all the devil will ask and ask. Sometimes they just sit there in silence and we confess to the devil. I've been thinking this way about myself or I've been doing this. I've been coping with this, um, this habit. No judgment. The devil's the last person at all to judge anyone. They're just questions. And they're questions that are Capricorn in any capacity, sun, rising, moon, I don't care, whatever. The Capricorn side of ourselves does have us devote ourselves to the work for growth and sometimes because it feels like there's nothing really much of us that's worth talking about otherwise. And that's not the truth. So just think about it. Think about who that um, reunion has been with. Think about what it's made you feel, what has re reinstated, reinvigorated in you. Um, and if you need to capitalise on that, then by all means do so, Capricorn Rising, but you don't have to. <laughs> Much love. Um, if you're still here with me, please put a big bowl of spaghetti in the comments in honour of Nigella Lawson, who's been guiding me through this last fortnight. Um, if you would like to support my work financially, I'd be very grateful for that. You can subscribe for 10 Australian dollars a month at buymeacoffee.com forward slash umaruby. The link is in the description below. There's also a tip jar there. So if you just want to throw some change in the tip jar, I'd, I'd love that too. If you'd like me to read your birth chart, I will draw you one. They look like this and I'll read it to you via Zoom, including the tarot that's in specific relationship with your chart. And we'll take an hour and a half just to discuss you and your astrology.
Um, you can make your appointment at my website, umaruby.com. The link is also in the description. Um, if I have read for you before and you'd like another reading with me, um, head back to the Back for More tab and choose the Truth, Magic, Love, Growth or Femme reading. We'll look at the current transits in the sky above, how they're affecting your chart specifically, and then we'll pull some tarot together too and answer your questions. Um, you've got my heart, Capricorn Rising. I love you very much. And I'll be with you to speak about the Sagittarius full moon coming up. So that's at the end of the month. Until then, take care, lounge, enjoy, pop the kettle on, pop the pasta sauce on. Let's get this feeling good again. <laughs> much love. Hello Taurus Rising, welcome to your reading for the Taurus New Moon happening very, very soon on Wednesday the 8th of May at 1.24pm if you're in the Southern Hemisphere with me. So hopefully this will be right in sync for you to engage in your new moon ritual. Uh, this is all about you. This is a long time coming, Taurus Rising. This to me feels really fertile. It feels like a really beautiful checkpoint in time that you get to uh, or you're encouraged to you're being urged to look inward just for a moment to look at your life to look at your perception of it to look at your beautiful um, through your beautiful perspective and think about where to from here think about everything that we've tended to, that we've been confronted with over the past time that we've been discuss discussing uh, your astrology. My mind is going back to last year. It's back to all of those eclipses in Taurus and Scorpio. My mind is really focused on all of the eclipses in Aries and in Libra that we've just contended with. Um, the astrology of the last month has been hectic. The whole year has been pretty full on. In fact, since October, it's been pretty uh, intensive. But in this moment, Taurus rising, I'm looking at your birth chart, I'm looking at your first house, your house of the center, the self, the soul's rising intention. I see the sun and the moon at 18 degrees. On one side, I see Venus at 10 degrees. I feel the relief of Venus in Taurus. We know that Venus is your guiding light, remember? And Venus is now on home base. This is probably why for the past two weeks I've just been eating spaghetti as much as I can and slow cooking pies and sauces for three hours at a time and clacking around in the kitchen, drinking my little savvy bee. Um, I've been whipping up the dog food. I've been lounging and resting with the heater on in my pyjamas. Um, I've been doing everything that I'm able to do to enjoy the sensory pleasures of this life. That's what Venus in Taurus has really been encouraging me to do. And I hope that you've been able to get there as well. This moon, this moment um, is in huge support because of, of this fact, because of Venus and their presence in Taurus. We know on the other side of things, there's Jupiter and, and Uranus too. I wonder how that, um, that, that rebellion is rising within you. I wonder how the revolution is going for you, Taurus rising. I'd be very interested to know. Um, what I really love about this astrology is that this moment, we've got great support in Taurus. If we go back to Aries, we've also got some brilliant support too. There's a sweetness and there's a sort of caramel quality that I really feel about Venus in Taurus. It feels really delicious to me. It feels really like the gateway is open for you to receive the pleasure that's being offered to you. To spice it up a little bit, I'm looking up to Aries and I'm seeing that Mars, the planet that rules Aries, so home base as well, is in finally to address and to reinstill, to recalibrate some of your bravery moving forward. The eclipses and all of the pain that they unearthed unconsciously for you, and this is what I'm really specifically looking at, unconsciously these, this wounding that was being revealed with the eclipses, but also with Chiron and with Mercury getting all confused, all of that sort of commotion that we've, we've been dealing with for the past month, Mars 
is rolling up their sleeves and is like, right, I'm home. What's going on? Let's get this figured out. This bravery, this sense of bravery is really rising. So as disparate as Mars and Venus are, right now they're working in synergy. They're working where they're at home. They're working to their strengths. So maybe this moon, this moment is something that you can identify with as far as working with your strengths too. The outer culture feels like a reckoning, doesn't it? So many curtains have dropped. So many men behind the curtains are being revealed. We know this to be true. We know that the structure of this clunky, janky old planet is disintegrating. It can't go on any longer the way that it has. We know that there must be reparation for the injustice of those that have been suppressed for hundreds, thousands of years. We know that it's lopsided at current, that there's a limited few that are benefiting from the labour and the oppression and the servitude of countless others. We know that these systems cannot operate any longer. That can sometimes have an effect <clears throat> on the microcosm of the individual because that feels so pressurised and tensed and angry and ferocious and desperate and lonely sometimes. When we are aware of all of this, the individual can sometimes start to attack itself, you know. Um, that's been my experience in my life. Oftentimes, I really have to check where my anxiety is arriving in my body and what spurred it on. What was the um, symptom? What was the... Uh, the cause of this current form of, of um, internal combustion. Venus in Taurus says, rest. Venus in Taurus says, pleasure is a rebellion. You have this biological space suit, this body, for some purpose. Yes, some of it is to condition and to contribute and to stand up, to rise. Some of it also is to enjoy and to feel and to nourish. The five senses all have multiple functions. Yes, of course, survival. Yes, of course, instinct. Yes, of course, safety. Pleasure is specific to something that feels so non-specific. It feels like magic to me sometimes, the ability to engage in, in acts of pleasure. It can also be such a beautiful rewiring of a very busy mind. And you hear terms about embodiment and you hear folks and whatever it is they're shilling you, whatever it is they're trying to sell you about um, five steps to uh, abundant life or whatever the flipping is. Um, a lot of the essential point of what these folks are talking about is the miraculous... Um, natural expression of, of, of pleasure. Like it, when you think about it, it's pretty wild. Venus wants that pretty wildness. Venus wants you to feel just in this moment. We know that Venus moves pretty quickly too. It's only a month, a couple of weeks. But against the backdrop of everything else that needs to be done, against the backdrop of everything else that's calling your attention, um, that everything that is, that is requiring you at this time, just for a couple of weeks, the wild nature of your sensory pleasures is beckoning you, Taurus rising. 
So I'd take it if I were you. We know that at, an, at a new moon, there's the potential for us to sow some seeds, to plant for future growth. So I wonder if you can stay with me until about six months from now, will be maybe October, November, we'll regroup on these ideas. We'll have a think about what we started here, what we planted and how it's growing. We'll assess down the track. But I'd like for you, if this reading is for nothing else, it's to remember your Taurian side. And I know that it can sometimes be confusing too because we're so used to kind of identifying with our sun sign, our personality. Um, and you might be watching this reading because you're a Taurus sun, um, which is completely valid. Um, what I'm kind of getting at is that and hopefully you can get that too as you've sort of if you've been with me a little while you can really start to register that every sign of the zodiac plays out in our lives in some way we have that shade and that texture to us somewhere in our lives the definition of taurus is that of fecundity of a fertility of a an ability to grow and I just have all of these images of poison ivy and forgive me, it's an Uma reference, but you know what I mean? Like it's just sort of like there's something so innately natural about Taurus that we all have inside of us in some capacity. We all have a garden that we can tend to. We all have the ability to make things grow or to create pleasure from the natural world around us, from those resources. Taurus is really slow, really considered, really gentle, but sometimes can be pretty firm too, depending on their mood. I want for you to embody this Taurian sensibility. If we look to the tarot and we think about Venus, we can look to the Empress card as maybe a good example of what Venus in Taurus might be bringing with us too. And remember, Every single one of us has access or has this side to us. Slow moving, considered pleasure is something that you might be really good at, Taurus rising. And it may be considering everything else that's on your plate, considering everything else that you're being called or being that's being required of you. It might be skip your mind from time to time that this is this is an innate part of your nature and at a time when so many folks are reckoning with their own greed and at a time when folks are being called upon to uh admit their violation either of the natural world or in any other sort of capacity there can be something that feels like guilt attached to pleasure as well some of us have got to do a little bit more work to remember that, that pleasure is our, um, that we, we are entitled to experience pleasure. This moment feels really specific and it feels, hopefully, um, that we can really start to build some really healthy foundations from this moment. Because Excess of anything is not a good thing. Violation in order to feed one's own pleasure is not the story that we're contributing to or allowing any longer. We know this very sincerely and the language is growing and rising around us. Violation is bears with it accountability. We keep a strong back 
and an open front. We keep our chin up and our heart ever tender, Taurus rising. And it is different for different folks as to their journey back to the garden, back to a sense of enjoyment, um, sensory pleasure. Some folks have a different lens in which they look to, to those parts of their life. Some folks, um, it's different for everyone. But that's how Mother Nature would want it. Nature thrives on diversity. So I hope that I'm not sort of being too cryptic here. Um, but I do wish for you to know that the culture and this is going to grow and grow as the kids get older as well. My body, my choice, my mm. sorry, it's been really emotional this past couple of weeks. I'll be honest with you, Taurus rising. It's been really, really emotional, and there's been lots um, that has come to a head. And I'm just looking back on your birth chart to make sure that I stick with the astrology and don't get don't get personal, Kim. Um, there, there has been many marches in the streets and many activations, public activations in protest. Um, here in Australia, there was a women's march um, that uh, rocked the, the country after a very long, protracted history, um, cultural history of violence against women here in this country. It's an ongoing continuum that we deal with and things aren't getting better and it's... Um, encouraging to see that the population is really working with Uranus and Taurus and saying enough is enough. Um, this changes. That's something that we can rely on with this configuration is an uprising of sorts. Um, remember revolution, rebellion, like we stand against this. It's for, for those of us that have had um, lived experience with with intimate partner violence it is invigorating but also chillingly triggering in times such as this um, and so all of this Venusian conversation that I'm having around reacquainting yourself with pleasure and reactivating the body and all of that kind of stuff there might be some triggers in there too um, what I'd like for us all to remember in the close of this reading I'll get you some cards as well is that Taurus wants us to take it as slow as we need to. Venus is in Taurus for the next couple of weeks, but remember, this is this is this is a moment in time. Venus will come back soon enough too. They move pretty quickly, but this is just a moment in time to have a conversation and to open up that conversation with yourself about your individual right to sensory pleasure and the respect that we give one another from this moment forth in regard to boundaries around sensory pleasure. Mm. I hope, yeah, I hope that that makes sense. Because it's, it's, it's not going away. Um, and I encourage further conversation. Um, I encourage, I, yeah, I encourage your... I encourage your journey, Taurus Rising, I really do. I hope that you feel embodied and that you can, I hope that you feel some sense of um, identification with Taurus, if I've, as I've described it to you in, in this way. Some cards very quickly. I do have one eye over on the couch there looking at my little, my little friends. <laughs> the center card. That I got here is the six of cups and in this particular version of the deck it says pleasure right up the top there lovely there's something that feels kind of nostalgic with this card and it is a great um, uh, trip down memory lane perhaps there's a sort of like um, remembrance of good times past um, there's something about re instigating um, a relationship 
with, with your sensory pleasure. Perhaps as I've discussed and as I've given you this reading, there's little moments in, in time that have twigged your um, interest or that are pulling at you. Be like, oh, I do remember when I was, or there was this time that I had this incredible experience with so-and-so, or, oh, I remember that's how I used to embody you know, my sensuality, that's how I used to move around this world. That was a really great time. I felt really proud and I felt really protected by my own energy back, back in those days. As we sort of think about what we're recalling, yeah, I really do see it. I see this, this, um, this, yeah, this uh, magnetism that you have or, or you can remember having. And I see it as being really pure and really vital um, and wonderful. Um, and this feels to me like that this conversation is um, much needed, Taurus rising, because we're moving towards sowing that seed. So when thinking about your magnetism, when thinking about your appetite for pleasure, thinking about the different ways that you want to activate from here on in, working with the current moment and working with the uprising of respect, autonomy, boundary, standing up for our rights and the safety of others, thinking about the responsibility that it takes to enact in sensory pleasure with another. I'd love for you, and this time you don't have to tell me in the comments, but I'd love for you to hold all of this info and write down what it is that you're sowing for the future because it does feel really powerful to me. And it almost feels that all of this work that we've been doing with these readings, with this astrology, um, has been beneficial and that we, we're, we're ready to reacquaint ourselves with our sensory pleasures. So remembering the good times, remembering the times when you did feel really embodied and really present, and perhaps remembering that that is a, a um, that that is a mentality or that that is a that is a a way of being that you can come back to as well it's fabulous to reacquaint yourself with your sensuality at whatever stage of life you're at but once that healing is on its way it can feel really empowering to step back to step back into the uh, appetite. Very much love to you, Taurus Rising. If you're still here with me, put a bowl of spaghetti in the comments in honour of the divine Nigella Lawson who has been comforting and cajoling and wrapping me up and pleasuring me all fortnight. <laughs> um, if you've got the resources, um, you can send me some tip money at buymeacoffee.com forward slash umaruby. The link is in the description below. If you'd like to support my work financially, I'd be very much appreciative of that. Um, you can also subscribe for 10 Australian dollars a month if you have the resources to do so. Um, if you'd like me to draw your birth chart, they look like this. Um, you can make an appointment with me at umaruby.com. That's my website. It's also in the description below. Pick a spirit reading if I've not met you before. Um, I will draw your chart and we'll go on a journey with your astrology and read the tarot that's in relation specifically to your chart together. If I have read for you before and you'd like to see me again, head to the back for more tab and you can choose a magic, truth, growth, love or femme reading and we'll look at the current astrology how it's affecting your chart in this moment in time and then pull some tarot together to answer your questions so much love to you taurus rising i am so glad that you're here with me um thank you for your patience um remember that this reading we're leading into a moment so New moon ritual, sure, 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 beautiful, absolutely stunning on Wednesday. But let's just sit with this potential, this grand potential for a reacquaintance with your sensory pleasures. 
um, I think that it, that's effing fabulous for you. <laughs> um, I'll be with you uh, at the end of the month for the Sagittarius full moon as well. So until then, you've got my heart. I'll speak to you very soon. Bye. Hello Virgo Rising, welcome to your reading for the Taurus New Moon happening very soon on Wednesday the 8th of May at 1.24pm if you're in the Southern Hemisphere with me. So again we're getting there just in time. However there's a feeling that is going to roll over into the next couple of weeks as well. We're just reaping the benefits of Venus in Taurus since the end of last month, since just after the full moon in Scorpio, there is a a feeling of slowing down. Hopefully you can feel it too. And it might just be for a moment. But what I know about Venus is that they are incredibly at home, on home base, in their element in Taurus. Taurus is the sign of the zodiac that wants to take things as slow as they can, that really uh, puts off rushing, that really is present and physically available for things like pleasure and enjoyment and knows that all good things in this life come to those who wait. So if at all possible, I'd like for you to take your foot off the gas just if but for a minute and enjoy the current moment. Enjoy the fruits that that Venus is offering to you at this time. I've been trying as hard as I can to do the same thing. Uh, I've been really languishing in the moment. I've been cooking a whole bunch of really slow cooked food um, in the kitchen and just been pottering and chopping and stirring and really living my uh, life to the, the fullest Nigella Lawson limit that I can. Um, it wasn't entirely on purpose that this happened in conjunction with Venus in Taurus. However, I do keep my eye on the astrology these days. And in my life, there's always been brackets of time where I just need Nigella. It's, I've been that way since I was like 17. Um, I just need to listen to her. Um, in the old days, I didn't do so much cooking from her advice. I'd just sort of watch and listen to her voice and fall asleep. But these days, I've been taking her up on the offers and I've been uh, enacting those rhythms and rituals in the kitchen and really bringing myself back down to earth with um, repetition and chopping and stirring and smelling. Um, that's what Venus in Taurus really encourages us, us to do as a, as a culture. Venus is the planet that wants us to have a pleasurable life, that wants to encourage um, our senses to activate. And Taurus is a fixed earth sign of steadiness and of readiness and the one that really knows what time it takes to, to cultivate. A new moon in Taurus is always um, ripe with possibility. I have the Ace of Pentacles here to have a look at because we can sort of see the metaphoric seed that might be planted at a new moon in Taurus. There's possibility here, there's potential when looking at your birth chart, Virgo rising, Taurus is the sign that rules your ninth house, which is where we learn about philosophy, religion, spirituality, where we take ourselves on grand adventures to seek out a teacher, where we eventually in our lives hold class and have students of our own. It's a really beautiful, hopeful house and at a time that can sometimes feel a bit hopeless, where one can feel a little faithless, it's always beautiful for you to, to remember that Taurus, the sign of slow-moving, steady energy, is enveloping your ninth house of your spirituality. Um, I would like for you to think about your spirituality. I'd like to think about your language maybe your religious practices, your rituals in this life. And I'd like to think, for you to think about where you might like to take yourself with these topics. If you've been thinking that there's been ways that you'd like to activate your, your knowledge, 
um, on world religions or on world um, spiritual traditions, then this little pocket of time, this, this new moon in Taurus would be a great moment to plant. And then we can look forward to the remainder of the year um, to see what might grow from that space. There are many of us that are looking for some sort of hope, some faith that we can hang on to. It's a trying time to be a human being on planet Earth at present. We know this very sincerely. We also know that things like hope and things like faith and uh, uh, embolden us to continue. Venus in Taurus is in company with Uranus and with Jupiter too. So maybe if you can remember when we were speaking about that conjunction between Jupiter and Uranus, the rebel and the optimism, when we're thinking about different ways to revolutionize our spirituality or our faith, perhaps we're contending with um, the tremors of the past, of perhaps a difficult upbringing with a certain religion, perhaps your faith is being tested right now. Um, Venus is here with the self. Venus is here to wash the feet, to dress the body with oils, <clears throat> to take it slow, to bring it back down. I hope that you can feel it too. And it's just but for a moment. We know that Venus moves pretty quickly. And so by the next full moon, actually, on May the 24th, they will leave. But in this moment, it feels really like an opportunity that we can't miss. That's why I've been really locking into my senses. I've been really locking into the daily rhythm. I've been really locking into the meditation that I can muster, that I can drop into that, that, that frame of mind when I'm in the kitchen, which sounds very funny coming from someone like me. I think perhaps if you had have known me, maybe even five years ago, that would have been, that would have felt conflicting to my reality. I wasn't always comfortable in the kitchen. I was, wasn't always comfortable with nourishing myself. I was very quick moving in this life. Um, but with experience and with time and with uh, pain that needs to be healed, I found ways to get in touch with my Taurian self and with my Venusian self and bond them together and come to realize that sometimes pleasure, seeking for it, activating your sensory pleasure can be an act of revolution. It can be an act of rebellion in a culture that would have us um, deny our senses or have us um, with limits around access to, to pleasure and to delight, to the, the simple joys of life. Um, it can be revolutionary to take a pit stop and be like, I need to nourish at this time. All of this to occur in your ninth house feels like spiritual nourishment. It feels like hope redefined or reinvigorated. So maybe you can look to the goddess when you think about Venus. You can think about coming back to a relationship with with your spirituality with your the goddess within um what is venus telling you where are the parts in your life that need tending to in your garden um what can you um nurse back to health when it comes to feeling like you have hope or that you have faith now, that's the sweetness, that's the caramel part of this astrology, that's the really delicious part. The other delicious part, but that's a little bit spikier, a little bit sharper, spicier, is Mars. So Mars has entered into Aries since the beginning of the month. So we have Venus and we have Mars, both personal planets, which means ones that move quite quickly and really do color and texture our, our lives intimately they're both in signs that they have rulership over they're both in signs that they feel really comfortable and beneficial in so as we look at your birth chart virgo rising and we remember that this has been a long journey an ecliptic um short circuiting 
of Aries and Libra for all of us, but for you in a very tender spot in your eighth house of grief where those unconscious wounds have been um, urged to, to be reviewed with Chiron's presence. A lot of vulnerability, I think, maybe has arisen. There's been a great deal that I can feel and a lot of others too. But now Mars, the sword, the shield, the valour, the bravery is on their home base. So with this reactivation of pleasure, with this reacquaintance that you're having, perhaps in the physical self, perhaps in your ability to feel pleasure, um, to enjoy pockets of your life, there's also something like bravery that will have us being able to contend with some of these wounds that are left bare. This feels like a dressing of those wounds, hot though it might seem, and sometimes Mars can sort of cauterize the wound, you know, but we do that to continue our healing, don't we? There's, there's a lot of chins being held high at the moment, and I encourage it, and I hope that as we hold our chins high and we stand up for what we believe in and we speak out against the injustice that is ever-present and ever-growing, and if the astrology has anything to say about it, will be a continuum for the remainder of this year at least. But as we contend with that and we speak up for what we believe in and stand up for what we know to be true, there's also something that is an invitation back into the joy and the pleasure and the um, deliciousness of life too. And it's all well and good to uh, be a warrior, but we've got to be a princess sometimes as well. <laughs> so use this moment. The new moon, yes, that's tomorrow on the 8th. Um, but use this moment pocket of time the rest of this month in company with Venus in Taurus get into the kitchen or get into the garden get into bed whatever it is that you need to feel connected to your body and to your senses this is the time to take take the invitation with Venus I'm going to get you some tarot too I think Virgo rising to round this one out um <sighs> What else can I tell you? Probably what, what I will say is that if you've been with me for a while, you know what is happening in Aries. You know what is happening in Taurus. This is a continuum and the personal planets are about to come into conjunction with all of that activity. So for the next month, we have support on our team. That's what it feels like. We have planets that know what they're doing, that are, um, that are working to their strengths rather than their weaknesses, that are being as useful as they possibly can. So on topics of healing, on topics of revolution, on topics of uh, uh, hope, we've got some good company right now really fertile ground it feels like to plant this seed so amidst all of that info when you consider your faith your spirituality where would you like that to take you next or how would you like to re-engage with those activities if your life used to be filled with ritual and with um, prayer in whatever capacity, um, I believe that all roads lead to the same place. I believe that when working in good faith, every faith-based system is valid. But perhaps there's been bigger fish to fry for you and you've had to set down some of those, those, those rhythms. Venus and Taurus is encouraging you to come back to them. What I can see is limited capacity and what I can see is a lot of pain. But if you remember that the swords and the tarot do reference our thoughts, our memory, our mind, the way that our information is being processed, 
it's helpful to realize that, that we can step down, we can climb down that ladder of swords from time to time. We, as much as the mind is busy, as much as the reality is pulling our focus and really, really having us um, uh, uh, invested, involved, um, uh, uh, dragged to it, you can see it happens to me sometimes. It happens so easily these days. I get lost in a in a in a thought, or I get um, so wound up in the mind. All I can do is to remember that I've got power over that impulse, and that I can step down when I want to. The best way to do it is just to follow the feeling. So if it's here that is feeling so strained and so stressed, and so pained we can readjust our focus and come back to here is a good place to start because that's where a lot of um, my anxiety anxiety shows up is right here definitely here i get tongue tied and i get short of breath when i get anxious but once we can feel it here we can carry our intention or we can carry our attention eventually to here there's a lot of great, great, great healing and recentering that can happen in the belly, in the body, finally. So that's what I encourage you to do. If any of this gets too much, particularly this one, rest absolutely essential. But make sure that it's restful as much as you can. Laying on the couch, staring at the roof, dissociating is not so restful. When you're drawn all of your attention into the mind, it's, it can't be so restful. This is an encouragement to set some of this down for, for, for moments when you're able to, and to really allow the physical self to recalibrate. I want... I want that connective tissue between you and others, that feeling, that um, sense of belonging to re-establish itself, Virgo rising. I see that I see it's coming. I see that in the right company, and let's face it, these days, not with everyone, life has really changed for so many of us and our intimacy is limited and that's okay. What these cards are telling me though is that in the safety the confines of your your intimate relationships there is a lot of opportunity to share and there's a lot of opportunity to listen to how each other one another how we have been feeling what we've been thinking absolutely sure and we can help to sort of rectify some of those um tensions the feelings, you know, our feelings are really being, one, encouraged by Venus and Taurus. Um, and as far as I can see it, provide the answer to a lot of our pain points as well. Sharing how you've been feeling as well as how you've been thinking um, is imperative at this time. And with this simple pocket of slow moving Venusian, Taurian spirit, we can gather our strength to continue. A lack of faith or a loss of faith is one of the most heartbreaking things that can happen to an individual. I remember when I first lost my faith many, many years ago. Uh, it was a thud. And it changed the way that I moved around in the world. It changed the way that I shared with folks. It changed my perception of myself and my contribution and um, my access to joy. I'm happy to report that I have my faith back. And it's a negotiation and a continuum 
the ninth house, faith, hope, spirit, is part of the privilege of being a conscious human being. And whatever gives you a sense of comfort and a sense of um, hope for the future, I would highly encourage. It's a faith-based system that is in good faith, then you can't go wrong. That's your reading, Virgo Rising. Thanks for being here. If you are still here, put a bowl of pasta in the comments for me in honour of my patron saint, <laughs> Nigella Lawson. Um, if you're in the financial position uh, and you'd like to support my work, head to the link in the description below. Head to the buy, buymeacoffee.com forward slash umaruby. You can subscribe to my work here for 10 Australian dollars a month or you can put some money in the tip jar. I'd be very much appreciative of that. If you'd like me to draw your birth chart, they look like this and you can make your appointment at umaruby.com. That's my website. The link is also in the description. And we can arrange a spirit reading. Well, I'll, I'll take you on a journey through your astrology and also the tarot that's related specifically to your birth chart. If I have read for you before and you'd like to see me again, head to the back for more tab of the readings page and choose a truth, growth, love, magic, or femme reading. Any of those topics might tweak your interest and we'll look at the current astrology, how it's affecting your chart specifically, and then we'll pull some tarot together and get some answers for what you need answering. <laughs> Much love to you, Virgo Rising. Take it easy. Take it as gently and as pleasurably and as softly as you can muster. I adore you. I'll be with you to speak about the Sagittarius full moon soon enough. Take good care. Bye.